Tonight on Nightline, Scientology under attack. A wave of websites, videos, and protests turns a critical eye on the celebrity-studded church. Now this niece of Scientology's worldwide leader, raised in the church, tells Nightline why she left and why she's joined the protests. Growing up, Scientologist, a Nightline special report starting now. From the global resources of ABC News, with Terry Moran in Washington, Martin Bashir, and Cynthia McFadden in New York City, this is Nightline, April 24, 2008. Good evening, everyone. I'm Terry Moran. Tonight, Scientology under attack. The Church of Scientology now claims membership in the millions, and it's opening lavish new facilities around the globe. Their expansion is helped, no doubt, by the very high profile of some of the church's members, like Tom Cruise and Kirstie Alley. But it comes in the face of a mounting wave of criticism in online videos and in protests across the country. The woman you're about to meet is part of that wave. Yet her criticisms of the church are more surprising, perhaps, given her family tree. Not only was she raised in the church, she's a niece of the church's current leader. This is her story of her life in the Church of Scientology. Lisa Fletcher reports. He's one of the biggest box office draws in history. The face of an impossible missions force agent. Fearless Top Gun pilot. Coming in, Ice. I'm coming in. And relentless lawyer. Answers. I want the truth! But in recent years, Tom Cruise has also become the face of Scientology. With public and unbridled passion for the church. I think it's a privilege to call yourself a Scientologist. A recent video so, made for a Scientology event that was leaked online piqued people's interest in a belief system that has long been surrounded by controversy. We are the authorities on getting people off drugs. We are the authorities on the mind. He's vocal about the benefits of Scientology and a supporter and close personal friend of its worldwide leader, David Miscavige. Miscavige took over the reins of power when science fiction author and founder L. Ron Hubbard died in 1986. Scientology is about you, yourself, and what you do. Miscavige says Scientology can offer its followers greater ability in all areas of life, uh, rid people of negativity, and make them, quote, clear. You see, all past attempts have been to bring man up to somebody's standard of what's normal. What we're trying to do in Scientology is take somebody from this higher level and move them up to greater ability. According to the church, Scientology is in the midst of tremendous growth. Being a Scientologist is basically being someone who helps. They claim millions of members in more than a hundred countries. I am a Scientologist. I am a Scientologist. I'm a Scientologist. I'm a Scientologist. Though critics say those numbers are vastly overstated. Recently, the church finds itself under increasing attack. Anonymous has therefore decided that your organization should be destroyed. In January, a group of online activists known as Anonymous posted this threatening video on the Internet. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us. And have since staged a number of anti-Scientology protests across the country. The church has shot back with a video of its own. While claiming they are peaceful, in less than three weeks, anonymous members made or encouraged 22 bomb threats and eight death threats against members and officials of the Church of Scientology. New websites critical of Scientology are popping up all over the Internet. And just last week, an interview with actor and former Scientology member Jason Begay was posted on YouTube. Scientology is destructive and a ripoff. XScientologyKids.com was created by three young women who used to be members of the church. I was born in New Hampshire and my parents joined the church when I was two. One of the women stands out from the crowd of online critics. That's because on the family tree of Scientology, she's rooted in deep. She is a niece of leader David Miscavige. When I was younger, you know, he would send me presents on my birthday. He was, you know, very gregarious, very nice. Jenna Miscavige Hill was raised in the church. Both her parents were high-ranking members of what's called the Sea Organization, or Sea Org. It is Scientology's version of the clergy, the group of people who essentially run the church. What we're told is that they have to work so hard because they're helping other people. Your family isn't the most important thing. From the age of 6 to 12, Jenna lived here at a Scientology-owned property in California that was known as The Ranch. 
We lived in dormitories, and I would only see my parents once a week. According to Jenna, life as a child was not very childlike. It was like 6.30, wake up, it, you'd put on your uniform, you'd clean your room. Somebody would stand in front, and they would go to each line, and they'd be like, Unit A, report. If you were late, um, you would get um, a chit, which would go to your ethics file, which they had one for everyone. One time, a kid got a bucket of ice water dumped on top of his head when he was late, even though it was 6.30 in the morning. She says seven days a week, children as young as six had long days on the ranch. In addition to reading, writing, and arithmetic classes and studying Scientology, she says there were physical chores. These projects range from rock hauling, taking rocks out of the creek, picking them up, hauling them up the hill, putting them in a pile, and these were usually to make um, rock walls. As a little girl, she says she remembers weeding for hours. And we would do this no matter how hot or how cold it was outside. Somebody might say, you know, if you go to a strict school, a military school, there are going to be certain things that are required of you that may not be required of a kid in public school. Except I didn't exactly sign up for a military school. I don't think my parents were trying to sign me up for a military school. In an official response to a Radar Magazine article that included Jenna's story, the church wrote, children were never forced to engage in manual labor. Claims to the contrary are categorically denied. About the ranch, which was closed in 1999, they said the facilities were nothing short of spectacular. There's nothing wrong with your kid working their chores, learning the ways of the world. Does it have to be rock hauling when you're a girl who's six years old? Jenna says when she was seven, she was asked to sign a billion-year contract to prove her devotion to the church. It means that, like in Scientology, they believe that you live lifetime after lifetime. So you've contractually committed yourself for every lifetime you have right. to Scientology. Mm -hmm. After six years at the ranch, at age 12, Jenna left California for a visit to the church's so-called Mecca in Clearwater, Florida. She says church elders asked her to remain there and become a full-fledged member of the Sea Org while her parents remained in California. I wanted to go back and see them, and I was even about to get on a plane, and I just got pulled into a room and screamed at, telling me that, you know, I'm here to be a Sea Org member. At 12 years old, Jenna says life at Clearwater consisted of long days studying academics and Scientology and hours of administrative tasks and chores. Sometimes, Jenna says, they worked through the night. You don't sign up for the nights, or you stay up all night, sleep two hours, stay up all night the next night, sleep two hours. I saw my mom probably a half an hour one time from when I was 12 till I was 16. I saw my dad maybe three times for a half an hour each time from 12 till I was 16. In its written statement to Radar Magazine concerning Jenna's account, the church said it, quote, does not comment on how parents choose to educate and raise their children. Jenna's parents declined our request for an interview. Hundreds of miles away, and unknown at the time to Jenna, another young woman was working in the Sea Org. When I was 14, I was recruited to join the Sea Organization. They made it sound so wonderful. Like Jenna, Astra Woodcraft was the daughter of Scientologists, and as a child, went to Scientology schools. At age 15, she married a fellow Sea Org member. Her workday consisted of studying, mostly L. Ron Hubbard's teachings, and clerical duties. I worked, you know, 15 hours a day. We worked seven days a week. I maybe had two or three days off a year. Astra says disobedience wasn't tolerated in the Sea Org. She says once she refused an order from a higher ranking Sea Org member. And he held me up against a wall, screaming in my face. They'll paint this extremely rosy picture, and, and it sort of sucks you in. Astra's father, Lawrence Woodcraft, says the family joined the Sea Org because of his wife's passion for Scientology. He says they were often assigned to work projects that took them away from their two daughters. She would happily go for a year or two without seeing them. I'm sure she missed them, but her total priority was Scientology. And when I'd spoken to her about it, she said, well, if I don't further the aims of Scientology, the kids don't have a future anyway. So, you know, it was that level of fanaticism, I think, that drove her. Astra's mother did not return Nightline's calls. Lawrence says he grew disillusioned soon after joining the Sea Org. He says he wanted out, but he says taking his children would not be easy.